Hi, this is Paulo from the NBA Academy, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make fuck corner bases like the ones in the track Clapper by Scantia and Annex. So this is the original track. And this is my recreation. But before we get started with the video, make sure you get subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell to not miss any for future videos, and also to support our channel while we create a lot of free content for you. Also, I'll remind you that if you want to get access to this preset and the project files, you can become a member of Preset Pass, and not only that, but also get priority in your sound request. So with that being said, let's get into the video. But before we get started with tweaking knobs, I just got to show you the different knobs that we're going to be playing. So we're going to play A, and then E. But at the beginning of each note, we're going to have a pitch bending like this. So the way I program this in the DAW is like this. The pitch bend goes here in the first note and on the second note, it ends at this bar. So now let's go back into Serum. And the key behind the sound relies on the different combinations of harmonics plus distortion, but not only that, it also depends a lot on the different movements that we add into the amplitude of each harmonic, which is a very tricky process. And I think that if you learn how to use this at your advantage, you can get so many sounds out of this. So let's just start by turning on our sub and oscillator B, and let's add sine waves on each. There you go. So now if we play this, just a very big sine wave. And now let's just set up our harmonics. So on oscillator A, we're gonna add B number three. On oscillator B, we're gonna add an octave of B number three, which is pin number six. So now we kind of have the harmonics. But we like the texture, the movement, etc. Let's also bring the random knob all the way down so we get a constant sound each time we play the notes. And let's set the phase at the beginning of each waveform. Cool. Now it's going to the effects, add distortion. We're going to add a filter before distortion. We're going to add reverb filter. This is just to add a bit of texture. Let's boost the drive. Cool. Now let's add some reverb. But this reverb, we're going to automate it. So let's set our LFO to eight bars because this sound is a whole riff. So we got to find our way into adding all the different variations of it just by using one patch. So let's map LFO number two into the reverb and we're going to create a rising shape like this. Cool. Let's leave this point here because that is where it ends. Now let's go back into the oscillator tab. And here is where we gotta learn how to manipulate the different harmonics and their amplitudes to create the sound. So just to illustrate this, let's experiment by bringing the level of the self down and also of oscillator A down. So you'll see that this harmonic is gonna be far more prominent. And now if we automate this harmonic, we can get a really cool movement. Now, what happens if we leave this one constant, like 40%, and we automate this? We get the mid. Now, obviously, this is the sub. And if we boost it a lot, it's going to be pretty overwhelming. But still, we can get cool textures out of it. Now, what happens if we boost this one octave? or even put it two semitones down to make a seventh or five to create a fifth. As you can see, all the different movements and combinations of these three oscillators and their harmonics are the key for these types of sounds. 
at least in this workflow of, of manually modulating the different amplitudes. So let's just, let's go back into what we had. Let's reset oscillator B. And let's put the sub lower, like 7% maybe. Bring oscillator A lower. And the reason why is because we want this harmonic to be the start of the show. So let's map an LFO into the level of this. Let's bring the rate all the way to eight bars because that's the length of the reef that we're gonna build. And now let's play with this shape. Let's set it on trigger. Cool. Now we don't want this to fade completely because as the phrase progresses, this harmonic actually starts combining with the reverb and creates another cool texture. So let's set a point right here. Now I double clicked and hold Alt to snap the points to the grid. And now I'm gonna add another one and snap it right here. So now. Cool. Now let's modulate oscillator A. So it fades out as this harmonic becomes more prominent. So let's once again use a different LFO, eight bars, set it on trigger. And now let's make a rising shape. And the reason why we're doing a rising shape is because we're gonna put the modulation going downwards. So as this goes up, this goes down. So now. You can see how as this progresses, it removes some amplitude out of oscillator A. The sound becomes cleaner because of this oscillator being more present. Cool, so this is good enough inside of Serum. Now let's jump into some post-processing. So the first thing we're gonna add is some trash too. And the reason why is because we just wanna shape each band individually. So let's set it on multiband mode. And we're gonna set the low band to around 200 Hertz. And the mid one around 800. Because as you can see, each band is gonna contain a specific harmonic. For example, this one is the sub, this one is the oscillator A, and this one is oscillator B, which is really cool. So now let's just try to drive each band and shape this sound a little bit better. So let's go to drive, add crunchy grunge, add a bit of drive. Nice, now let's go into the mids. Well, kind of the mid. Once again, use the same mode. Boost a little bit. And now on the highs, we're gonna repeat the same mode. Boost it a lot. Now on this stage, I highly recommend you to experiment with all the different distortions, with all the different settings on Trash. And I encourage you to even step out of only using Trash. For example, now that I have a second listen to the sound, I would like to double down on the reverb filter. Boost the drive a lot. Add even more reverb and And just experiment with this cutoff. And as you can see, this type of sounds and workflow has a lot of possibilities for you to experiment and go out of your way and create your own sounds. So let's just delete the serum effects. And let's add a regular EQ. Boost around 1K. And boost a bit of the highs. And then I'm just gonna add a bit more reverb. And so this is gonna be our final sound. Now to add the cool movement at the end, we can add something like auto pan. And then on auto pan, we're gonna put the amount of on 100%, put the face all the way down. And now we have an amplitude modulator. And now we can have an LFO tool. So 
So let's just set the rate at 16 nodes. We can put the offset at 180 because it's gonna start this shape at the very beginning at zero. And now let's just automate the amount like this. Once again, you can go back into Serum and change the different harmonics. For example, instead of six, you can use four. And maybe even the, the octave of four, which will be eight. And that will give you a different texture. You can go back into A and change it from from three to maybe two, or maybe try something crazy like 24. That's too much. Maybe eight. As you can see, there's a lot of possibilities here. Should I put the seven semitones up? This one is a really cool variation of it. You can add some noise if you want this more brighter. And just try to make a different riff. For example, instead of these two notes, just use E. And instead of this pitch bend going down, maybe put it going up like this and increase the range to two. Cool. Maybe let's try to do a pitch bend like this. And even try a different movement into this LFO. Let's change the pitch bend to go constantly down. Or from down to high. That's cool, that from... So let's put it here, and maybe let's go back down. That's really cool. Let's experiment with the telephone. Let's increase the auto pan to go up here. Let's keep experimenting with the harmonics. Let's pull this back. Put it on seven. Nice. There's a really cool high harmonic here. Right there, there's a really nice harmonic. Let's try to delete this point. So yeah, you can get a lot of different variations if you know how to use this workflow of the harmonics and the different amplitude envelopes at your advantage. Let's try adding unison. That's a really cool movement. Let's turn off the auto pan. <laughs> I think with enough fine tuning, that flim 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 could create a cool riff. Let's turn off A. Let's change the harmonic. Maybe higher. That sounds really nice. Let's change the detune. This makes it slower. 
And this is a technique that I just learned by tweaking this preset. What happens if we put the unison down? There you go. Let's boost the amplitude of this harmonic. And now we transform the original sound in something of our own, which is this. Which is really cool. So that's gonna be it for that. So that's gonna be it for the sound and also for this video. If you like this new format of going out of the sound and showing you how I would turn this preset into something of my own, please let me know in the comments. I find your feedback really useful and thanks a lot for the support because I find it super motivating. So make sure you get subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell to not miss any for future videos. If you want this preset and the project file, you can become a member of Preset Pass. The link is in the description below. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.